So here we are at episode three of the new Tea for Two series, where I chat to artists and makers over a cup of tea about what they've been up to during lockdown. A couple of weeks ago, I caught up with artist Kate Lysett, and we talked about a project that has been born during this time and a new exhibition coming in September. So this is your cue to make a brew and come and join us. We hope you enjoy it. For those that don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Kate Lysett and I am a landscape painter and I paint things full of pattern and gold threads and beautiful colours and gold leaf and I'm very inspired by the lovely place that I live. Hmm. And how have you found lockdown life and that balance between family life and, and working, still painting? In the beginning when it was proper full on lockdown I think a lot of people freaked out and I really like that bit because everything stopped and I think my life is quite, it's quite frantic because I've got my uh, the twins are nine and Hattie's 13 so everybody needs to be somewhere so you know whether it's judo or music lessons or running club or brownies or so there's always something to do next someone has to be somewhere or you know dinner times aren't the same um, and suddenly all that stopped and it kind of felt very still and like we were able to be in one place and we were able to be together. And I liked that. It kind of felt like, you know, I don't know, all, how would you say, all, all your things are all in a row, all your ducks are all in a row. <laughs> and then because I knew my time was gonna be more limited um, and the children were always gonna be around, um, I kind of set myself a, a small, but specifically lockdown project and, and the pieces of work were smaller so I could take them out with me on walks with the kids. I, I know what you've been up to, so I'd love you to, and I, I actually don't know where you're up to with the project, but um, is it called Collecting Trees? It was, I think it's called the Nightingale Project because that first week when everything was a little bit kind of freaky horrible, Mm -hmm. um, got woken up really early in the morning like about 4 30 I think um, and it was a nightingale and I'm sure it was a nightingale because the night before on radio 4 they played that that vintage recording of a cellist playing in her garden and a, and a nightingale answering and I'd never heard a nightingale before and then I woke up the next morning mm -hmm. and I heard it and I went into the bathroom with my phone and I tried to record it and I got a few notes, but that's all. Um, and then later when I was in the studio, I suddenly thought, I know what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I had this idea that when I was doing my daily walks with the kids, um, I, would, I would collect trees and I would collect, um, well, the initial plan was to collect a tree on every walk. And when I say collect it, it was either going to be a really, really quick drawing or a photograph and you know it might be just an, an interesting tree or my kids love to climb trees so it'd be one that they climbed or one in a particular place um and then i was going to turn each tree into um like a persian tree of life design mm. uh, kind that you get on carpets where they're full of flora and fauna and you know you can have a, an oak leaf and a beech leaf all on one tree and intermingled with all kinds of different blossom and flowers and they're full of birds and beasts and because everything seemed incredibly quiet as soon as lockdown started you know there was far less traffic and the birds were singing much louder as partly the time of year I suppose but yeah. also things like you know we'd go out and we'd see we'd see deer and we'd see squirrels getting ever bolder and a brown hare at a particular point on the moor so whereas in the beginning I hoped that I might keep a diary and I think I managed that for three or four days. And then I thought, but what I'm doing today, I did three days ago. So what I would have each day would be like a list of what we'd seen and what we'd heard and, you know, what the light was like and, you know, what flowers were out. And so the project developed into not managing a whole tree a day, but, you know, a tree and a scene and a shrine. So the trees at the beginning were very, very naked. 
um because it was right in it was march you know the ones on the moors were still very bare um and there was lots of magpies and rooks about um and then you know trees started to get to blossom and then there was wild garlic and bluebells and then more recently but just dying away now is a spectacular year for fox clubs and bees mm. so as the projects progressed as the months have gone by there have been different things in our little world and i've been making all these paintings that that kind of every tree is is somewhere i know where all the trees are and they're all sparking memories of you know that particular day or that particular walk You, is this going to be a, a project that you just keep going with? No, there's a. I've set myself a limit, and I think I've got eleven pretty much done now. But I want to set myself a target of thirty because mm. I think thirty will give me a chance to get full circle. Mm. So you know, I want to get to winter because we started off in very early spring, yeah. um, and also I, what I'd love to do because I want to keep them as a collection. I want to. I want to display them. They're all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Thing. There are tall, thin ones, very little ones. Um, nothing is big. They're all portable. Mm. Um, but I want to have 30 because I want to put them together in a book. Somehow mm. produce a book and then, you know, make my list. You know, nothing as fancy as poetry or anything, just lists. But the lists as the, you know, the lists as the year works its way through are just going to be lists of beautiful words because it's all beautiful things. And I just love the idea of that kind of sitting on somebody's bookshelf. You know, when I was growing up, my grandma's uh, had the diary of a Edwardian lady. Oh yes, yes. So and um, and I was absolutely transfixed by them. And when they both died, bless them, um, I've got <laughs> both of both of the copies of them. Um, and I've got one upstairs and one downstairs. One's mm -hmm. on the bookshelf in the attic and one's on the bookshelf in the lounge. And they're just, I don't think I've actually ever sat down and properly, properly kind of read it from cover to cover, but it's the kind of thing it's nice just to dip in. Yeah. Dip in and out of, and that, the the thought of where it sat in their houses, you know, um, yeah. and the smells that they've probably lost them, but the smells that kind of clung to the book for, such a long time. I have exactly the same thing. My granddad had the book and I have his copy and I mm. remember reading it with him and it smells, it smells of granddad, smells of the sitting room. We'll have to compare copies. <laughs> um, so talking about your granddad, was it your, was it that granddad that taught you? Yeah, architect talk? granddad who, um, yeah, who, the one who taught me to draw. I was like, well, that was the twins' age. I was thinking about that the other day, talking about um, he was cantankerous with his granddad. He would pick fights with most people, and he was the most spectacularly aggressive driver you've ever met in your life. <laughs> I know the type. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it was him. Loved him, loved him to bits, and he was very devoted and was determined that I could, you know, he could teach me technical drawing and that I would be an architect. But actually, my, um, my, my interest wasn't there really. I, I I prefer a wriggly line to a a wiggly line to a, a straight line. But he did teach me. He did teach me with a drawing board and set square and everything, mm. proper kind of perspective and how to plan a house, that kind of thing, which is very sweet. And so I remember quality time with him in his studio and that particular book. Did your love of all things landscape and colour start? when you were growing up in Suffolk? I don't know. The landscape in Suffolk is very different. The light is very different. I mean, you've been down there with Sue's a lot. So you know that there's, um, you know, there's no hills. Mm. Don't get big dramatic Yorkshire skies. So in a way, I think um, my interest in the landscape was when I very first came up north to university and driving to York and suddenly the skies are massive and, you know, black clouds and rainbows. And I, you know, I remember being kind of really struck that it was so different from home. I mean, growing up in Suffolk, my dad was the one that would take me around art galleries. And when I was little, we would always 
had a story he read to me until I was about 14 um, but we'd have a story and then we'd look through a picture book and we just kind of dissect landscape paintings and look at um, tricks where the artist had used a particular line um, you know a hedgerow line or a stick or a formation in the sky to lead your to lead your eye across the canvas in a certain way mm. so that came from dad so in a way yeah, landscape painting and the understanding of it probably came from my dad I mean my dad still tests us because you know I don't know if you d know but my dad's a lumberjack or, or was he's retired now but he still tests me and my sister on trees really our ability to identify <laughs> trees which is fine when the leaves are on it but in yeah. winter that's when the real kind of the test comes and my sister just says oak 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 to everything <laughs> and eventually she's going to be right <laughs> oh dear but yeah we get very competitive about it I really wanted to know how your Toffee Town exhibition is coming along. Well, paintings for the future exhibition. Um, I, th I started those before lockdown. And what's funny is that they've, um, because right in the beginning we couldn't go anywhere. Um, they were, you know, drawings I've been doing, uh, I think towards the end of autumn last year, I started doing the drawings. And so the compositions were all, already decided and lots of them were kind of started on the big sheets of paper um, but then since lockdown the idea of traveling to Halifax has become somewhat exotic so they've taken on a, a bit of a Venetian look um, so my perspectives um, they seem to be much more above so they're, they're kind of much more complicated than normal but it's this idea this um, they are they're looking like memories rather than um, you know, somewhere I visit regularly. We should explain what Toffee Town is, shouldn't we, really? Well, Toffee like... Town is the, um, what they called Halifax because it was the home of Toffee. It was the Macintosh factory, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's like Hebden Bridge became Trouser Town, Halifax became Toffee Town. Um, so the, uh, the exhibition is going to be at the Yorkshire Gallery in the Peace Hall in September now it was meant to be spring but hopefully it's going to be in September and it's just it's spectacular Halifax buildings because Halifax has got a lot of them I think. I'm going to start asking this to everybody um, who would you like to sit down and have a cup of tea with if you could choose anybody? They've got to be famous? No. I'm, n I'm never very good at meeting heroes Mm. Because either I'll let myself down or they will. <laughs> Possibly Grandad. Because mm. it's been a long time. Um, and, and particularly with the Toffee Town works, I often, you know, I've sat down and I've worked, I've worked things out. Um, and I just think, I really, he would really appreciate that bit of technical drawing. <laughs> I just think, okay, so if I could have a cup of tea, what I'd like to do is sit down with Grandad and show him the Toffee Town pictures. Oh, I love that. Mm. We'll end our little chat there, my love. And I'm going to raise a cup to you and say thanks for having a Didn't cup of tea with me. Uh, As always with these chats, I finished about 10 minutes ago, but hey ho. I've got some left, but it's cold. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to Kate for joining me and for sharing the stories behind her paintings. You can see more of her work and information about the Toffee Town exhibition at katelysett.co.uk. I'm Sarah Mason, a filmmaker, photographer and mentor based in West Yorkshire. Thanks for listening and keep your cup at the ready as there'll be another Tea for Two chat coming soon. When Kate sent over the photos of her work to me for this episode, she also included this note her granddad wrote to her. It seems a fitting image to end this episode on. 